Hi everyone, it's Mr. Wyman and I have a treat for you. It's lemonade line plots. So you and your friend decide to run a lemonade stand. Well, there's a lot to it. We're jumping the line. We are we are heading right to the part where you make money. How about how's that sound? You and your friend sell cups of lemonade. Now your friend has this ingenious idea, and I'm reading this slide here. She decides that you guys should charge one and a quarter dollars. This is what it looks like for each cup of lemonade. All right. That's how much it'll cost a person to buy one of your cups of lemonade. She explains that people might give $2 and not ask for change. Now, this is a thing. I delivered newspapers and it really did happen where if it was less than a dollar, like if there was change involved, people would just give two $1 bills and not expect any money back. They would even say, keep the change, okay? It's called tipping, okay? That's what this is. Uh, and so you agree to give it a try. You're like, okay, let's make as much money as possible. We'll try this. There's one snag that the two of you run into. It's having change for the people who do not have the quarter. In other words, some people came up to your lemonade stand. Here's a little picture of it. They came up to your lemonade stand and they said, I'd like to buy a cup of lemonade and they have $2 bills and they want change. They aren't interested in giving you 75 cent tip, okay? Now, they, they should. Um, maybe they're, it's kids themselves and they borrowed money from their parents and they need to, their parents say, give me back the change. So they feel like they need to um, get every bit of change. How much change would it be? Well, it would be 75 cents worth of change. Okay, so 125, if you take that away from $2, it, you would give back 75 cents, which is the same thing as three quarters, right? Now, uh, what happens is you and your friend, you don't have the 75 cents to give them, okay? And so what you decide to do is instead of foregoing um, business, um, uh, you and your business partner decide to take only one dollar from some customers. Um, the customers who have only dollar bills and they want change but you don't have it, you decide to just take just charge one dollar of uh, for the lemonade. So your friend wanted to keep track of the sales because it wasn't going the way you had thought it would go. So your friend, she wrote down the amount of money paid for each and every cup of lemonade, okay? And here's the data from your lemonade stand sales. You're going to use it to answer the questions one through eight. Uh, it says on the next slide, I actually need to change that because I, I put in this little graphic here. Um, slide, okay? And you're gonna use, and here are the numbers again. I put them on the, the story slide, and here they are on the top of this slide where you're gonna do your work. Um, you've got $1, $1, $1, $1.25, $1.50, another $1.25, $1, $1, $1, one oh boy. Lots of people are only paying $1 because you don't have the change. Um, $2, $2, ooh, you got some bonus there, some tip money. Dollar seventy-five, um, at dollar fifty and at dollar twenty-five. Now you are going to use these numbers to make a line plot. This line plot right here. There's a few things you need to do, um, and some questions that you need to answer. So, so you should just go step by step, um, answer either following the directions or answering the questions one through seven on this slide and then I have one additional question on the next slide. It really gets you thinking, which I love and I can't wait to see your answers on these. I want to go over the questions right now in this video um, in addition to going over this with you live um, during our Zoom meeting. 
I hope everyone can tune into that so that I can explain this um, with you and answer questions that you might have. But here we go. So the first thing that you need to do is fill in the missing number. Now where is there a missing number? Well, you've got one, one and a quarter, one and a half, and then here's a box. This is where the missing number is, okay? So you need to put a number in there. It's actually not a whole number. Here's the whole number two. It's a mixed number. So what belongs in here? Um, think about one and a quarter, one and a half. What would come next, okay? Um, question number two gets you thinking about these mixed numbers, the one and a quarter, one and a half, and comparing and contrasting them with the numbers up here. These numbers look really different, don't they? Um, so why does the line plot have mixed numbers, which is a whole number and a fraction, instead of amounts of money? How come you don't see one dollar with the dollar symbol down here? Why not? What I did was I, I combined money with um, mixed numbers uh, so that you could still see what we've been working with when we've been doing measuring to the nearest quarter inch, nearest half inch, but using it a little bit different way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer right here in this video, but you have to either type or hand write in this box. Um, the explanation. So listen carefully. Plain and simple. One dollar is one whole dollar, which is one whole. One twenty-five, one dollar and twenty-five cents. The twenty-five cents is a quarter. It's a quarter of a dollar. And therefore, for right here, it's one and one quarter of a whole, another dollar. And that's what this is, okay? The 50 cents is half a dollar, so you've got one and one half dollars, so that's one and a half here, all right? Um, it, this right here saves space, and it also um, communicates that you understand what these money amounts equal, okay? What they're equivalent to. Next, plot the data on the line plot. For this, you simply draw an X um, for each sale of lemonade. So for, and I would cross them off as you use them. So like a dollar, cross it off, put an X right here. Um, next dollar, put another X, right? Make the X's small because there's gonna be a lot of dollars. I had a hard time leaving enough space here while also making these questions and their answer spots big enough. Um, next, what price was the most popular price. So which price uh, from $2 down to $1, which one has the most X's basically? Which one was sold the most? Okay. Um, how many cups were sold for the correct price, which would have been $1.25. So you have to find $1.25, which would be a dollar quarter here, one and a quarter. And then you need to write in here the number of X's, how many cups were sold. And then how many sales included a tip? which would be over $1.25. Um, count the X's for all of them over one and a quarter. And then what fraction of the sales were allowed to be under the going rate of $1.25? In other words, anything under one and a quarter, what fraction of all the sales? I'll go ahead and tell you how to do this. You need to count up all of the sales and then you should, that would be your denominator, okay? And of all of the sales, how many of them were under $1.25? That will be your numerator, okay? If you remember numerators and denominators, you'll know how to do this, all right? And then finally, you are going to talk about this. According to the data, do you think that selling cups of lemonade for $1.25 was a good idea? Tell me why you think what you think. 